Welcome to Creative Tian channel. Today I'm going to start a blanket project. I'm making this blanket for my seven years old boy, but you can use the same technique to change to different size of blankets. And I have a reference chart for different size of blankets. And you can adjust the size from the chart and make it to fit your own. And I'm using LK150 knitting machine and the yarn is a Lion brand ice cream yarn. This is pure aquatic yarn, so that means it's easy to wash. And this is a medium weight yarn, so that's the worsted weight, the number four. Try to avoid the pure cotton yarn because that can get very stiff. If you want to use cotton, make sure it's blending with some other fiber maybe acrylic or wool. For the design, I try to keep the big panel in the center so I don't have to stitch up several panels later. And I will do the trimming or the edges later. Because this is a color changing yarn, so I try to keep all the pattern change continuously in the center part. If it's too narrow, I can add side panels to make it bigger later. So I try to use most of the needles on LK150. Totally there are 150 needles on this machine, but I try to leave a little bit on each side. It's easier to move your carriage this way. And remember you can pull out the extension panel on each side there is a lock on the underside of the machine. You can just press it and pull out the panel so you have enough space to rest your carriage when you need to the edges. So I'm going to use needle from 70 left to 70 right. And I'm starting with waist yarn and then just start knitting with the main yarn. I'm going to use tuck stitch for this blanket and I will leave it every five needles because you can already see the mark on the machine. Every five needles there's a little mark and every ten needles there's a color change from pink needle to white. But of course you can change to different spacing. I use tuck stitch for this project the tuck stitch makes the panel wider than the standard stockinette stitch. So that's good for blanket. And it also creates some texture, so it's not too flat. So I started with waist yarn, change to main yarn, knit five plain rows, and started my tuck stitch. So I pull out every fifth needle to the D position. So those stitch will be the tuck stitch. To knit the tuck stitch on the LK150 knitting machine, you just move the lever, the Russell lever from number two to number one. And I do it on both sides because I want to need three rows of tuck stitches before I change back to the plain knitting. So in my design, I have three rows of tuck alternating with three rows of plain knitting. And I will just keep repeating that for the whole panel. The tuck stitch just means when you knit, those stitch will not knit in the D position. So the yarn will just hang on the needle until you return to the plain knitting, the regular stockinette stitch then it will need that row. So we don't want to have too many rows of tuck stitch because it might cause problems when you try to knit too many yarns in one needle. Since I keep all the tuck stitch in the same position, so after a while you can see it creates some vertical lines. If you offset the location of the tuck stitch, it will create a diamond shape. But I try to keep it simple here, and I like that vertical line. It's very clean, but still have some texture. 
So the important thing is to remember to change the rustle lever before you do the tuck and uh, change back before you do the stocking and stitches. So this is a very simple pattern and we just have to go back and forth until the length you like. And here are some tips if you are not used to knitting big panels. First, you can place the yarn on the floor behind the desk. If you wind up your yarn into a cake, it's even better. This way, the yarn tension will be more consistent and it's easier to knit. And the second tip is the weight, especially on the edges, on the left and the right edges. You can add some weight because those stitches have a tendency to pop out of the needles. I check those needles before I knit the next row, just to make sure that stitches are knitted properly. And every 10 or 20 rows, remember to move your weight up so it has proper weight to pull down the fabric. Since this will be a big blanket, you want to make sure you move the weights up before the knitting hits the floor. Otherwise, the tension will be off and you will have proper knitting. Another tip is to adjust the mast tension with one hand. When I'm knitting with my right hand on the carriage, I have my left hand holding the yarn on the tension mast just to make sure the yarn tension is appropriate. Sometimes it gets too tight or too loose if you are not careful. So you can guide it with your left hand. It will make the knitting easier. So that's it for part one of this project. As for the dimension, because I use tuck stitch, it lies kind of flat. So it's about three feet wide before blocking. And when you block in, you can make it even wider. The yarn ball I use is seven ounce or 200 gram. So that's about 437 yard or 400 meters. For me, it needs about one foot or a little bit more than one foot. So I know I will need at least four or five balls for this 200 gram yarn from Lion Brand, the ice cream yarn. And I will need another one or two balls for the trimming around the edges. So you can make a swatch and calculate how many young balls you will need. This is a very simple project in theory, but if you are new, I'm sure we will make mistakes. If you drop a stitch here and there, don't panic. Just try to hand it back to the needle and try to fix it one stitch at a time. And there's no hurry, just take your time and enjoy the process. Next time I will find out some options to finish the edges. Thank you for watching today and see you in the next video.